So one of my favorite weapon types that I have a couple of videos on already, and I'm definitely going to have more, is the Bowie or Bowie knife. And since these are famous for being big knives, we might as well look at the biggest one. So here we are in Bowie, Texas, looking at a 20 foot long, 3,000 pound Bowie knife. It, essentially, it really is a knife, because here's the cool thing, that's a metal blade, a brass guard, and actual wood scales on the handle, or a wood handle. And there it is. Uh, this holds the uh, record, then. It's in the Guinness Book of Worlds of Records as the largest Bowie knife around. Uh, I would imagine it's the biggest knife, period. And yeah, you know, it's a sculpture, but in a way, like I said, it's actually kind of a real knife. So they went to some trouble here. It was pretty neat. Now, it's fitting that there should be a kind of giant version somewhere in the United States of America because this is the American, I would say, weapon. Definitely blade, but probably even weapon. It was made in 2016, so I'm seeing it pretty early in its run. Now, you know, how do we get to the point that there's a town named after the man and a giant replica version of his famous weapon? Well, Jim Bowie, actually, we don't know if it was pronounced Bowie or Bowie at the time. He's a great example of how in history just one incident can produce a legend. Granted, he was at the Alamo, which is why he's so well remembered in Texas, but long before that, 1827, he was in what's called the Sandbar Fight. And this was a duel that turned into an, an all-out melee. And what ended up happening there, he was not one of the principal participants. He was not a duelist there that day, but one of his rivals was there. So was he. And uh, everybody started going at it. Uh, Jim Bowie was shot and stabbed multiple times, but he still used his large butcher-style blade to great effect even after all that wounding. Here's the most celebrated instance from there when his rival is coming to finish him off and he basically gets up and runs him through the chest with his big bowie knife. Wasn't called a bowie knife at the time, of course. He just happened to have a big butcher-style knife on him. And this was really similar to, say, how the legend of the gunfight at the OK Corral spread out just far and wide. Once this story got out in the press, People became fascinated with the fight itself, with Jim Bowie and his exploits, and what, you know, they thought of as his weapon. It was just one of those things that caught on like wildfire, and all of a sudden, it seemed like everybody wanted a big butcher-style type blade, and that became known as the Bowie knife. Which I still, when I'm talking about the weapon, I go with Bowie. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it just became a thing, in other words. And there were no rules, there's no exact... A description of what one of those was, and they really were just very simplistic, large, butcher-style knives at first. But for the sculpture here, they of course went with what eventually became the most recognizable form of that knife. So you've got a long, broad knife with a cross guard and a clipped point. You can see where they went to the trouble of even putting the false edge up top there. So that's really cool. They spared no expense. In fact, here's a better view of that. The false edge is on the left there, and then, of course, the main cutting edge is on the right. And no, of course, they didn't make the edge either one sharp enough to cut, but, you know, I was impressed by the amount of work they put into this because I was really expecting just a giant novelty kind of, uh, you know, theme park type creation. Like, it wasn't even going to be metal, and it wasn't even going to show an edge at all, anything like that. Definitely kind of neat to see from a weapons geek perspective. It's just not like you get to see this kind of thing every day, right, for any weapon type at all. There are, as I alluded to, many other kinds of knives in terms of outline that you would still call a Bowie knife. And uh, my favorite I'll get to do a video on later. I have a great example of one in my collection, and it doesn't have that kind of outline really even at all. So this is a neat thing to see, but it's much more interesting as really kind of a cultural artifact. It's just kind of enshrining America's obsession with the, uh, the Bowie knife when it comes to cutlery, bladed weapons. Uh, to this day, knife making in America is dominated by this outline. Go to a knife show here and look at stuff that's produced here. There's a wide variety, of course, but just very easy to pick these out, and uh, I think they always kind of dominate. You know, you can even think about how the classic U.S. military knife, the K-Bar, which is from the 20th century, still retains the same outline, and it's probably no accident that they went with that design. I mean, it's functional, but I don't think that's the only reason they went with that. If you're wondering what else there is to do in Bowie, Texas, uh, the answer is not much. Uh, certainly not on a random Sunday, which is when I found myself here finally getting to look at this thing. So, you know, I love the little small Texas towns and exploring whether they have a weaponry connection or not. But uh, this was definitely the one reason to stop off. Although I did have an amazing steak sandwich in the diner that you saw in the previous picture, off in the distance. 
Sweet Boy's Diner, or was it Sweet Boy? One or the other. It wouldn't be hard to find. Uh, well worth stopping for a meal, and you kind of feel like you've traveled through a time machine when you're there. I, of course, mean that in the positive. Ultimately, even though this thing is new, it's still kind of a callback also to an American tradition, which was the uh, roadside oddity picture opportunity. I'm a sucker for any of those, uh, but especially one like this, as you can imagine. Thanks.